Spiritual practice is something which is often neglected in the modern society. People give so much importance to earning money, but they don't give a lot of importance to their spiritual development. 大部分人把这个关呃把这个焦点呢都放在说如何能够赚取更多的金钱，而不是让自己的灵性能够进步跟成长。We should understand that there's more to life than just simply money. 那么呃，我们需要了解到说，对于我们的这个呃生命来讲的话，还有很多事情是比这个金钱更加重要的。We want to understand about the importance of the soul. Not just taking care of the body and not just having a peaceful mind, but having a peaceful soul. 那么这里面呢，最重要是在于说，呃，如何的，不是只有说是呃，照顾你自己的身体，然后赚取更多的金钱，还更重要的是如何的去照顾你自己的灵性。Please understand, there's the physical body, there's also a subtle body, which is our mind. But there's also a spiritual body, which is the soul. 嗯，那么呃，大部分人只知道说我们这个外在的物质躯体，可是呢，常常就会忽略了，其实我们内在的灵性的躯体就是我们的灵魂。So understanding the soul and becoming aware of the soul, this is part of the practice of yoga. 嗯，那么呃。能够理解灵魂，然后并且理解到说，呃，灵魂的重要性，这个是这个我们对于瑜伽修行的一个很重要的一个理解，应该要理解的点。Yoga is a popular word today. We see a lot of yoga studios around in Taiwan. Also, more and more people. There's a lot of yoga studios developed here. 那么瑜伽这个概念呢，在呃台湾可以说是还流传的蛮广的。我们房间也有许多，大家知道各种不一样的这个瑜伽教室。But these yoga studios are mainly focusing on the physical practice and increasing the flexibility of the body. 嗯，那么可是大部分的瑜伽教室强调的都是呃肢体的开发，然后肢体的这个练习等等。that is only one tiny part of the yoga teaching. We want you to understand there's a whole culture behind the practice of yoga. Generally, when we speak about yoga, we introduce people to a book, a very ancient book, which was originally written in Sanskrit language, called the Bhagavad Gita. I had the experience myself meeting the Bhagavad Gita when I was a student, I studied in the UK and from the UK. So I was studying 
engineering actually, and I, I graduated also, in, and I, I graduated up in Edinburgh, which is part of Scotland in the UK, and uh, I, we had a course on the Bhagavad Gita. Uh,我要跟大家分享一下我第一次和巴拉巴蒂的遇到的一个情景。那那个时候呢,我还在这个英国念书,那那个时候在念大学,那修的是这个是属于工程这个学门的这个科系。那当然我也顺利的从那个学
we change also the body. 嗯，就好像说，我们把它打个比方，就好像我们一直在换衣衣服一样，在外面衣服一样。You can see, Matthew is wearing a sari. 嗯，那就好像说，马太先生会穿着这个sari. But tomorrow she will have different dress on. 嗯，那当然，他明天有可能穿别种衣服。the, the dress changes. She's the same person in the dress, but a different clothing. So same way, the body is changing from childhood to youth to old age. The body changes, but the soul is the same. 那么同样的道理，呃，即便经历了不同的躯体的变化，从儿童、从幼童、少年、成年到老去，虽然躯体在变化，但是这个灵魂始终是一致的，是如一的。So the soul is of a different nature to the body. The body is material, it's physical, but the soul is not material. The soul is spiritual. It's eternal. 那么这个躯体呢，是物质组成的。那但是呢，灵魂呢，是属于灵性的、永恒的。Are mm -hmm. we are all souls? We are all eternal beings. We are not physical bodies, but we are eternal spiritual beings. 那我们呢，作为灵魂，每一个人其实都是啊，呃。I met my teacher. My teacher came from India, so I met him in London. And when he came in London, there were some reporters came to interview him. And the, one of the reporters asked him a question. They said, Swamiji, how old are you? 那么呃，我也跟大家讲讲，呃，那个时候我在伦敦遇见我的林庆导师，那时候林庆导师是从印度来，呃，来到伦敦，啊，当时呢就有一些这个记者呢想要去啊采访报道他，那其中有一个记者
And we should know what is the proper food, not just for the body, but also for the soul. Certain foods are not good for the soul. And that, when I say not good, I mean it, it really covers the soul. And that kind of food, that is what we what animal flesh and things like that, impure things. 那么这里面要跟大家强调说什么叫做对于灵魂不好的食物呢比如说这里面讲到说动物的这个肢体啊这种东西其实是不好的因为它不洁净那这里面讲的对于灵魂不好指的是说它会去覆盖掉那个灵
因为啊，这个我们刚刚讲到说这个不要有吃这个动物的尸体嘛，可是有的人就会讲到，就那个植物本身也有生命啊，对不对？所以这个部分的话，我们要更进一步来讲讲这个部分。Of course, there's a difference between vegetables and animals. 那当然了，这个植物跟动物还是有所不同的。And there's a difference between animals and people. 嗯，那当然还有更重要的是，我们也必须要去知道说，我们人类跟啊动物之间啊是有很大的区别。Right, you don't need people. 啊，比如说我们这样讲哈，我们这个呃，我们不会去吃人吧？大部分人不会这么做。That's good. <laughs> yeah, but uh, if we eat, if we eat uh, animals are different from people. Uh, animals are different from vegetables. 嗯，那么如果这样讲的话呢，我们可以知道说，我们不会吃人嘛。那但是你说这个吃动物，那吃吃动物其实是跟这个吃、呃、这个这个素食。使用这个食物，植物的这个来源的食物呢，是很不一样的。No, it's not better to eat vegetables than to kill the animal. 嗯，那么对于呃饮食来讲的话，啊，当然最好的是你呃采用素食，那么不要去呃为了饮食而杀生。And in order to avoid, in order in order to avoid the reactions which come from killing the vegetables. Then we we have a thing. But there's a process which takes away the karma. That is simply by offering the vegetables. 那么我们既然讲到说要避免杀生的这种啊不好的业报环境，那很多人就会问说，那可是植物也有生命啊？那我们吃了植物之后，不是也是取走了植物的生命吗？那么明清老师在里面就讲到说，所以有一个很重要的环节，就是我们用。供奉的方式来净化这个食物。By, make, by making the offering, by saying some mantras and so on, it takes away the karma. 嗯，因为我们取走的也是一样是植物的生命，但是如果我们拿来供奉，而且在供奉的过程当中，我们适当的来念诵祷文的话，可以把这一些因为取走其他生物的生命的这个不良的业报反应消除掉。And takes away the karma, and it purifies the food, so that when we eat the food, we actually get spiritual benefit. 嗯，而且还不是只是说消极的把我们影响其他生物的生命的这种不良业报消除掉而已。更进一步的，这样子的供奉和念诵的，可以让这个食物更加的进化，从而有益于我们的身心。So yoga practice, uh, we we want to control the tongue, and we control the tongue by eating food which has been offered in some mantric process. 那么刚刚跟大家讲过，在瑜伽的修行练习当中，最难的就是控制舌头这个感官啊，这个器官。那么这个部分呢，其实透过刚刚所说的，当我们的舌头只品尝。供奉过的这样子的进化了的食物的话，就可以帮助我们在这个部分的练习更加的进步。And we also control the talking by chanting Maha Mantra. 那刚刚讲到舌头还有一个功能就是可以讲话。那怎么样来进化这个部分呢？就是用舌头来念诵 Maha Mantra. We were seeing you all chanting and dancing today, very blissfully. 那么我们刚刚看到了，大家怀着很大的一种喜乐的心情来啊唱诵，然后来加入 Kia 团，而且跟大家一起跳舞。So that chanting that creates a spiritual sound vibration which purifies the atmosphere. 嗯，那刚刚的这种唱诵的过程当中呢，就能够去创造出一个啊超然的一个声音震动，那从而让我们得到净化。嗯。This way, you can control the tongue. And when the tongue is controlled, then the mind will be more peaceful. 那么呢，通过这样的方式，就能够更加的容易的去控制自己的舌头
，那这个时候能够控制住的话，你的心也会更加的平静。So yoga has a whole lifestyle to it. There's a practice that we we shouldn't eat too much and we shouldn't eat too little. 嗯，那么呢，其实瑜伽是一个很全方位的，在你生活的各个层面要去做的一个练习。那我们刚刚提到的一些饮食的一个呃规范之外呢，当然同时要注意到说，不要吃的太多，也不要吃的太少。Eat too much, you can get diabetes. 嗯，那么当然了，你如果是吃的太多的话，你的消化会出毛病。Diabetes is rich man's rich person's disease. 嗯，那这些消化系统的毛病其实都是有钱人才会有的这种富贵病。You eat too much sugar, too much starchy foods, you can suffer. It's a nasty disease. 嗯，那么比如说呢，呃，就比如说就是摄取太多的糖分等等，这都会造成你的身体有罹患疾病的这种风险。And if you eat too little, then you can get TB, tuberculosis. TB, yeah. Um, what's it called? I want to eat tuberculosis, TB, eat too little. Uh, what? I want to eat, I want to eat. Anyway, there's a disease you get, which is uh, uh, very dangerous. 那么当然呢，如果说是太少的话，你的身体因为你的这个能量不够的话，会出一些毛病。So, China, they have a saying about eating food stuff, right? It's an, it's there in Ayurveda also. The teachings of the Ayurveda is the, the same as what's taught in Chinese medicine. 那在埃鲁维达的这个哲学里面，它传统里面也有这样类似的概念。早上吃了，早上吃了应该吃了多少？早上吃了好，早上吃的好。中午吃了好，晚上吃了好。嗯<笑> <laughs> yes, the very important rule: don't eat too much in the night. 那么，呃，同样的，不管在呃呃中国也好，或者是说在安于伟达的教导也好，那确实呢，刚刚讲这个三餐的这个不同分量的这种食的规范。The Ayurveda say that the power of digestion increases as the sun rises. 呃，那么呃，在阿育维达的概念里面呢，或者是提到这个消化的，呃，在在消化食物需要的那个那个热能呢，是随着这个太阳升起而起来。So after midday, when the sun starts to set, our power of digestion will decrease. 嗯，那么随着太阳到了中午的时候达到了零点，那过午之后，太阳的这个太阳的位置。开始慢慢慢慢慢慢要准备要日落了。同样的，我们胃里面的消化之火也慢慢慢慢慢越来越弱。But you see, in the modern lifestyle, people are working all day, hardly they get time to eat, and they come home at night and have their main meal in the evening. 啊，这个是你看我们现在的生活，常常白天的时候因为工作，所以忙到了。太怎么样的去顾到自己，好好的啊饮食，那直到自己下班结束工作之后回到家里面啊，却又非常放开来的吃喝。It's not a very healthy lifestyle. 嗯，这其实不是一个这个健康的饮食方式。So we learn from the yoga practice that we should regulate the eating. Try to eat the main meal in the midday. 就刚就是我们刚刚所说的这样的饮食的一个呃分量的一个规范，其实或者瑜伽练起来讲的话，我们是应该要好好的把这个自己最主要的。
提供一下那个分量，安排在这个呃中午之前。And yoga also tells us about sleeping. They say, don't sleep too much or sleep too little. 嗯，那当然，关于这个呃睡眠的一些规范呢，啊，瑜伽也有它的教导，它提到说，啊，不要睡太多，也不要睡太少。Everyone has to eat, and you have to sleep. 嗯，每个人呢都需要啊吃东西，啊，每个人都需要啊睡眠。But we should learn proper times. Proper manner of eating and also sleeping. 嗯，那么我们呢，应该要学习的是适当的，按照规范来饮食，按照规范来睡眠。In the yoga lifestyle, yogi will want to sleep earlier in the evening. 嗯，那么在瑜伽的修行规范来说的话，一个瑜伽的修行者应该要早早的啊入睡。They will sleep early and wake up early. 嗯，然后都会早睡早起。Because early morning is a good time for meditation and controlling the mind. 嗯，因为呢，早起的那段时间啊，是非常有助于冥想，非常有助于你的灵性的益处的。The modern lifestyle is just the opposite. People sleep very late. And get up late. 嗯，不过呢，现在大部分人生活都是啊，睡得很晚，然后起床也起得很晚。They get up late, and then they're they're always behind. They're rushing all day, trying to catch up. 嗯，那么因为也因为晚起的关系呢，所以所有的事情呢就开始啊，因为晚起，所以随之这个所有行程都匆匆忙忙的在赶着。The yoga masters also tell us that if you can sleep before midnight, what every hour before midnight is equal to two hours after midnight. 嗯，那么在瑜伽的说法，也就是说，如果啊你你在你在这个呃午夜午夜十二点之前提早一个小时睡。的那样子的那个效益、啊，会比你晚两个，呃、uh, ，late two hours。No, it's equal to two hours after midnight. You get the benefit of one hour every hour before midnight.、Yeah. You get the benefit of two hours after midnight. 哦、oh, ，那么呃呃，相对啊，就是在瑜伽的这个对于这个睡眠的教导，是不是？嗯。比午夜十二点这个时间呢，早一个小时睡呢，或对身体获得益处呢，会比你晚睡两个小时要多很多。So the yoga masters they they have that habit that they would like to sleep earlier rather than later. 嗯，因此呢，在这个瑜伽的修行的这些老师们都会强调说，应该要能够尽量早睡。There's a, an auspicious time in the day for practice of yoga, which is called Brahma Mahurta. 嗯，那么接下来要跟大家讲一个对于瑜伽修行非常重要、非常神圣、呃有效力的一个时间。那梵文叫做 Brahma Mahurta. Brahma Mahurta comes one and a half hours before sunrise. 嗯，那么呃。One and a half hours before the sunrise. Ah, 那个 Brahma Mahurta 指的是在日出之前的一个半小时。If you ever go to a Buddhist temple or even a Hindu a Indian temple, you see they have they get up in the morning four o'clock. 那么，如果大家曾经到，不管是这个佛教的寺庙里面去，或者是说你有曾经拜访过这个在印度的这些呃各种不同的寺庙的话，你会发现他们几乎都是四点就开始啊、呃、准备要进行早课。Because that's the auspicious time in the day. It's the time when the mind is peaceful. It's the time when you can control the mind and focus your mind on what you have to do. 
，为什么要这样子？在那个时间点，那个时间点就是一个非常适合修行的一个一个时间，因为在那个时间点，你很容易让自己能够专注，那你也很容易让自己的心啊，心灵能够呃，在一个平静稳定的状态。And you will see also after the 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 Buddhist people, they will eat two meals a day. They don't eat in the night. They eat the breakfast. They eat the lunch. They don't eat after midday. 嗯，那同样的哈，呃，如果说大家知道的话，有一些这个佛教的僧侣，他们其实是只有吃两餐，那就是我们以呃，有有一些这个说法是说是过午不食。那有一些的话就是讲说，哪一天只有两餐之后，那再没有这个晚餐这这个第三餐的这个饮食习惯。So like that, you want we want to regulate our activities, eating and sleeping. They want they should they have to be regulated, controlled. 嗯，那我们为了这样子的这个灵性的修行的益处呢，其实我们应该要养成自己在。So to help us control, we have to practice chanting Maha Mantra. We chant the Hare Krishna Mantra. 嗯，那么当然也为了要帮助我们能够控制自己的心念，哦，那个啊，所以就有很大的一个部分的功课，就是要念诵 Maha Mantra. So I have a, a bag here, have my beads here, and we chant on the beads every day. We do this meditation. 嗯，那么在我们的瑜伽修行里面呢，我们的这个每天的日常修行就是像林心老师的这个念珠袋里面的那个念珠，那我们用这个念珠袋来啊、呃、念诵啊。It's a great benefit to help us to control the mind. 啊，这样子的念诵呢，对于我们控制自己的心念是非常非常有益处。Bhagavad Gita tells us the mind can be the friend and the mind can be our enemy. 嗯，那么呃，巴拉巴蒂那里面曾经教导，就是说啊，这个我们的这个心念啊，对，可以是我们的朋友，但也可以是我们啊最可怕的敌人。The mind can liberate us, and the same mind can degrade us. 嗯，同样的啊，这个我们的心念可以让我们。获得解脱，但是同样的，我们的心念也有可能让我们被束缚跟捆绑。Just like a knife, a knife can be used by the doctor to heal someone, but the same knife can be used by the murderer to kill someone. 啊，就好像同样一把刀来讲，对于外科医生来说，这把刀可以是动手术救人性命的刀。但是对于其他的歹徒来讲，那把刀却可以取人性命啊，伤人身体。We have to learn how to train our mind to make our mind a friend。那么我们有很大的功课，就是要如何的去训练我们自己的这个心念，让这个心念能够成为对我们有益处的朋友。Is your mind a friend? You have a good friendship with your mind? 呃，大家想想看呢，你跟你自己的心念、你的心意之间呢、啊，是一个友好的关系吗？你跟他做了一个好朋友吗 ？Sometimes it can be a very bad enemy to us. 哦，有时候这个你自己的心念啊，很有可能是我们对我们来讲啊，是很有威胁，是非常危险的。So how to train the mind? 嗯，那我们应该要怎么样子来训练你自己？ Sometimes we we say the mind can be like a wild animal. 嗯，有的时候我们自己的心念其实就像是一个不受控的疯狂的野兽一样。You know, if you capture a a tiger or a lion, you know, would you know how to tame it? You know how to tame it? How to make friends with it? 嗯，那么比如说呢，大家可能有呃去野生动物园看过，不管是狮子也好。老虎也好，或在影片里看到，但你觉得你能够跟这样子的野兽能够做朋友，能够交朋友吗 ？So our mind is like that. When you capture a wild animal, you know the process to train the animal. They will put it in the cage, and they will leave it in the cage for many days. 
without any food, they will starve it. 那么呢so after the animal has been in the cage for many days, then the man will come with a whip and beat it. You may say, oh, it's very cruel. No, there's a purpose behind this. After he's beaten it, then he will feed the animal. So then the animal understands this man is very powerful. He put me in the cage, he starved me, he beat me, and now he's feeding me. I better do what he said. So, dealing with our mind is like that. Mind is like the wild animal. You have to starve the animal. You have to starve our mind. How do we starve the mind? How do we beat the mind? We have to we have to get we have to do the things the mind doesn't want to do. The mind says, I want to eat chicken, I want to eat meat, I want to drink, I want to do all these bad things. So you have to beat the mind and say, no, I'm not going to do what we're going to do? How how you beat the mind? You say we're going to eat vegetables and fruits. And The mind says, oh no, no, not vegetables again. I want fish and eggs. <laughs> we have to make the mind do what is what it doesn't want to do. Mind wants to sleep all day. We tell it, no, we're going to get up early in the morning. And the mind says, oh, just sleep more, it's okay. You can meditate in the night. You don't have to meditate in the morning. Ah, 
So we have to understand how tricky the mind is, how it's very cunning, always trying to keep us away from spiritual practice, from the practice of yoga. So to help us, you have to chant the Maha Mantra. You chant the Hare Krishna Mantra, you get a lot of help to conquer over the mind. And in the beginning, it may seem difficult, but it becomes so much pleasure gradually. Just like being vegetarian, it, it's so natural after some time. You, you actually and take great pleasure in eating vegetarian diet. It's a natural, healthy diet. Our body is designed to be vegetarian. We don't have the teeth like the tiger or the dog to eat of meat. The acids which are in the human body are not powerful enough like the acids which are in the animal, the meat-eating animals. The acids in the human body are very mild, meaning they're meant to digest vegetables, but they're not meant to digest meat. And the design of the intestines in the human body, we have a very long intestinal tract because the vegetable, the food, takes a long time to come through the, 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 the long tract. But the meat-eating animals, they have a very short digestive system. So especially here in Taiwan, you're very lucky. The Taiwan grows so many varieties of fruits and vegetables which are available for everyone. And not only fruits and vegetables, but grains and beans. There's so many foodstuffs available. You do, we do not need to kill the animals and eat meat. Mm. Uh, 
那也有种植谷物，然后也出产很多的豆类。那这些呢，呃，条件啊，其实都非常适合大家养成一个呃舒适素食的一个呃饮食习惯，实在是没有必要为了要这个呃吃一餐啊，伤害其他生物呃其他动物的生命。The worst meat is the red meat. I mean, if you eat like the the cow's meat, that's the most harmful, mm -hmm. and it carries the greatest karmic reaction. Mm -hmm. 那么呃，在肉食里面呢，其实呃，如果是吃红肉啊，像牛肉的话，其实呃，这个业报啊的反Maybe you're, you're, you're thinking about being a vegetarian, but you're still eating meat. You can progress like that. Give up, first of all, the red meat. Don't eat any cow's meat. Maybe you just, in the, in the beginning, you just take only chicken, like that. That's, that's white meat, different from the red meat. Red meat is very bad. Uh虽然可能没有办法一下子就到了这个呃素食这样子的阶段，但是呢，你可以考虑啊，先放弃掉在你的这个饮食的这个习惯当中，先把红肉从你的这个饮食习惯当中啊，把它拿走。那你先试
家老小大家都只想要吃肉而已，那老师就是说，那是因为你不你不晓得怎么样去煮出好吃的素食啊。如果你能够煮出好吃的素食的话，他们也一样会很受吸引。My spiritual teacher went from India to America, 1960s, and he was in America in 1960s. Nobody was a vegetarian. Everyone was, but he would cook for them, and he would cook Indian food. He would cook in very nicely food, using spices and so on. And nobody ever said, "I want meat." Everybody was so happy; they were enjoying so much the food. 那么呃，这个老师他的灵性导师啊，也就是薛拉康他他在一九六零年代啊啊到美国传教的时候。那时候美国哪里有谁是素食者的？每个人都吃肉，而且吃牛肉的一堆人。那可是呢，他刚开始接触的那些年轻人，从那些跟他接触的年轻人开始，啊，几乎那个时候呢，新帕巴的他就是每一天啊，就用自己从印度带来的这个呃这个吹土的工具啊，每一天都帮这些年轻人做晚餐。那么渐渐的，渐渐的，因为这样子。好吃，而且又带着这种异国风情的这个印度的这些素食，好越来越吸引他们，也改变了他们的这个饮食习惯。OK， so are there any question? Anybody？ 呃，大家有什么回馈？有什么问题要提出来的吗？ Yes. 
呃，这里面这个活体跟实体之间最大的一个区别就是，呃，灵魂在不在？但是灵魂才会让这个身体有意识跟有觉知。哇，那叫灵魂啊，是不是？嗯 ，And what is soul? And what the the soul is the living force in the body. The body is like a dress. The body has, is not alive. The body is just like a dress. 嗯，那么呃，其实我们的物质躯体就像是我们的穿着的衣物一样，啊，是灵魂。这样子具有生命力的，这样子的呃呃，甚至是有超级的。我们的身体好像衣服一样，我们的衣服，我脱衣服，他们不会懂。是在换一套，然后再换一套，再换一套。对。What is the purpose that this uh, the, the soul living in our body? According to, well, the soul has our desire. This body, this is our karma, our desire. You know, we desire this type of body from our past. We've had many births, and this body is the result of our past birth. Uh, 这样的躯体呢，其实是来自于说，呃、啊，我们也保佑我们，呃，累累生累世有不同的生死。那在你之前的生世呢，你有这样子的，呃，业报，当然也还包括了你有这样子的一个，呃，欲望，你有这样的想望，希望能够获得什么样的身体。因此，在现在这个此时此刻，你获得了这样的一个身体。对，你我知道。这样子的这个呃生死的这个轮回当中的循环当中，能够得到解脱。解脱。解脱。按照我们的业报，我们出生在这样的情况。如果有好的业报，你出生在一个富有的家庭，你的教育很高啊，你很美丽，有这样这个是好的业报。有不好的也报，我们出生在多么的身体啊，一棵树，他们也是生物体，可是他们的也报不好，因为他们有这样的身体。如果没有也报，我们可以解。就是说，最后没有也报的话，就会离开这个物质躯体的循环。
Thank <laughs> you.